When my white coworker in college called me nigger, I did not punch him in the face. I did not even bother to tell him about every bone in both my hands begged to bruise as it became part of the breaking of his porcelain body. I wanted to. I wanted to, but then I remembered the Confederate flag that hung above his bed in his dorm room, and in that moment, the unseen noose that tightened around my neck choked back my words down my throat until they bounced back into the muted throats of the bodies a little white girl once reburied in mine. When my white coworker in college called me nigger, my white supervisor asked me, did he say it in a mean way? <laughs> PWIs, y'all. I asked her if it mattered if his lack of anger should have made me hug him back when he tried to come around the table to say sorry after he realized he had crossed the shaky bridge he was halfway across before. I wanted to tell her that I sat up all night wishing Mo was there helping me lick my wounds, how maybe he might have reminded me to pick up the pieces of my smile I left shattered on the floor and never went back for. When my white coworker in college called me nigger, my black supervisor asked me, did he say it with an A or an E-R? I wanted to ask her if it mattered, if changing the ending of a word could truly rewrite the story it had started to tell. Instead, I laughed it off and left her office. A few months later, she told me that in the moment before my laughter, she had looked into my eyes and saw my face become a stony facade instead of eroding beneath the waves of tears that she saw crashing at the shores of my eyelids. That when I got up to leave, she swore she saw the bloated bodies inside of me, buoy me from her chair and float me out of her office.